Hello, and thank you for joining the Sonk Live TV Peer Exchange. This program will feature an expert panel discussion regarding clinical advances and practical considerations in treating metastatic melanoma. My name is Dr. Mario Snow. I'm a professor of medicine and the leader of the clinical research program in melanoma at the Yale Cancer Center. I'm also the co-director of the Yale Spore in Skin Cancer. Today on our panel, we have a number of distinguished uh, uh, physicians. Dr. Robert Anbaca, Associate Professor in the Surgical Oncology Department of Surgery at the University of Utah Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah. Dr. Omid Hamid, Chief of the Translational Research and Immunotherapy Program and Director of the Melanoma Program at the Angeles Clinic and Research Institute. Dr. Jeffrey Sossman, Professor of Medicine, Director of the Melanoma Program and Co-Leader of the Signal Transduction and Cell Proliferation Research Program a member and medical oncologist at Vanderbilt University, Dr. Jeffrey Weber, uh, MD, PhD, director of the Donald Adam Comprehensive Melanoma Research Center at the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center and Research Institute in Tampa, Florida. The Dr. Merrick Ross, professor of surgery and chief of the melanoma section at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. So thank you again for joining us today. Let's uh, get started. Um, so let's start with Dr. Ross. Um, a patient gets referred to you from a dermatologist with a uh, uh, primary melanoma. What are the surgical options and considerations for that patient? Well, certainly this is the, one, this is the most common scenario that we see in patients with melanoma since uh, at least 85% of the patients who are newly diagnosed will, be, will present with clinically localized disease, so they're clearly surgical candidates. And the purpose for surgery in these patients is to accomplish several goals, and one is to um, have long-term local regional control of their disease. Uh, and, and try to um, enhance the chance for their, for their curability, and also trying to accomplish this by minimizing the morbidity of our surgical approaches. Uh, certainly a wide excision is normally what we would offer for patients uh, at the primary site with margins that have been established based on prospective randomized trials, um, really related to certain factors of the tumor, like tumor thickness would be the most important factor that would give you ideas as to how wide of an excision to perform. As part of the same initial management from a surgical perspective, uh, patients with certain risks of having uh, the presence of microscopic disease within lymph nodes in the regional lymph nodes, these patients would be candidates for sentinel lymph node biopsy. Again, for the purpose of trying to optimize their chance for cure by treating lymph node disease early, and also optimizing their chance for long-term regional control within the lymph node basin. Um, so let's go with that. Uh, Dr. Ambaka. Who, who would you perform a sentinel node biopsy? What is the, the thickness that you would use, the parameter to select a patient for a sentinel node biopsy? So the thickness um, over the past few years has changed um, quite a bit. It used to be one millimeter in breast thickness that we would perform this on. Um, however, we have lately really started looking at the risk of having micrometastatic disease in those lymph nodes. And we have said that a risk of about 5% is something that we would uh, discuss the procedure with the patient and offer it to the patient. And if we look then at the parameters of that primary melanoma that provides that risk of around 5%, it really falls at a breast thickness of about 0.75 millimeters. So at our institution, we would do it at 0.75 millimeters. At other institutions, they still do it at one millimeter. We also do look at other parameters of that primary melanoma, such as ulceration and in increased mitotic count. That's a mitotic count of one per millimeter square or greater. And we knew, do know that those um, factors increase the risk of having nodal involvement. So if the patient in their primary melanoma had of those features, we would also recommend um, a sentinel biopsy for patients. 